welcome to our Monday Minute. Today we're going to discuss the January 17th, 2023 release of the quarterly Oasis E Q&A. There were some, I think, some pretty revealing um, answers to some of the questions um, that have been asked over and over again. Um, the first one we need to make sure is clear um, is how you determine whether you move on to Oasis E um, or you continue with Oasis D. And the reality is at this point in the game, um, everything's pretty much, if not everything for sure, is Oasis E. Um, the determinant for Oasis E is the date the assessment is completed or Moon 90. And so even though your patient may have had a start of care in 2022, if you are doing a recertification or a discharge or anything else related to that patient's care, if the date the assessment is completed is in 2023, then you must use OACC. Most of you I'm sure have figured that out by now, but it was in the Q&A again, and I had questions about it just last week. Um, so I wanted to make sure we got that out of the way. The other item that I wanted to make sure we focus on is the high risk medication question in the end section where it asks specifically about the categories of high risk medications that the patient is taking and whether or not there is an indication for those high risk medications. So one of the biggest clarifications, it's really twofold. Um, the first part of that is that if the patient is taking a compound drug that would involve two different categories, then you are to mark both categories. Um, I think that's pretty clear and the Q&A does give you an example, so you'll want to check that out. The second item is the indication question. And so there has been a little bit of a cloudy situation regarding exactly what that means. Does it have to be that there's an indication listed on the patient's care plan? Does it have to be that it's listed on a patient's medication listing that was provided by the referring physician? What exactly uh, does it mean and what sources can you get the indication from? Um, CMS um, in the Q&A has not given us exact direction um, they did provide a list of things that could be used um, for that indication, but they were very clear um, that there is not an all-inclusive list um, and that you basically can use your judgment. Um, discussions surround um, acute care hospital documentation, other staff and clinicians, the patient, the patient's family may supplement or clarify information from the patient's medical record. So there's not an all-inclusive list of an indication. Um, personally, um, I would be careful in just taking the patient's word for it uh, because there could be confusion there. As you know, there have been plenty of patients that have told home health clinicians that they were a diabetic and there was no evidence in the medical record that the patient's a diabetic. So having said that, you just want to be careful about just taking a patient's word for an indication for a drug. Uh, but getting clarification um, from the patient, patient, family, caregiver, et cetera, um, they have said uh, you can use that to supplement information in the patient's medical record. I think my biggest um, deal with clarifying this is to ensure that you understand um, that it does not simply just have to be like on the referral document or specifically listed um, in a medication list that you have been given directly from a referral source. Um, we will include the link to the Q&A um, in this minute. I hope this has given you um, some very helpful information today and at least some insight into a few of the questions um, from the quarterly Oasis E uh, Q&A. Um, if you have any additional questions or need additional clarifications that we can assist with, don't hesitate um, to let us know. I hope you have a fabulous week and hope to see you in a live conference this spring and summer.